I always question knowledge, like not necessarily like what we know, but no, like how do we know that we actually know something in the first place? Um, so it's like meta level questioning. And I think it's like really, really phenomenal that for hundreds of years, people were convinced that I, had I been born back then, would not be human. I, like, black people were not human. And this, that, like, having that like, be kind of the foundation on which like, I've lived my experience in the United States, it makes me question things I see in class, things I see on the street, I don't know, perception. Um, it just makes me question a lot of things. Blackness to me is faith. Having faith in what you don't see. Um, because you know, we, as a people, often don't see um, validation. We don't see uplifting in the context of mainstream America or even situations like Harvard. So for me, it's having faith that, like, you know, I am significant, I am valid. Um, I am valuable, even though everything else is telling me that I'm not. Before I came to college, I had a sort of very negative understanding and vision of what it meant to be black. It sort of just meant like, this is the reason why my family is sort of tormented by my neighbors and why I don't really fit in at school and why I get picked on and various things. And it wasn't until college that I got to really experience the black community. And I got to really extensively study black history. You know, like studying jazz was probably the most uh, like freeing, wonderful experience I had just because I got to see what black people have made out of the sort of blue notes that have been projected onto their bodies ever since they were brought here. For me, being black means to be interwoven with an immense, difficult, and beautiful history. It means to wake up every day in this brown skin, knowing that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Being very phenotypically white, um, a lot of people will tell me, you know, you don't act black or like you don't look black, so you aren't black. Um, which is like kind of led me to question like what makes a person black? Is it looking black or is it, you know, being culturally black or being like ethnically black? Um, a lot of people say that yeah, I don't, I don't speak black. I don't really know what that means. Um, but I got that a lot back home. Not as much here at Harvard, but a lot back home for sure. Yeah, I don't believe in like a biological basis to race. I believe it's like socially constructed, um, yada yada. That being said, it doesn't mean it's not real. There's like, so, like a building is, so, is constructed, it's still real. Race is still real, it has impact on people's lives. Um, and I guess being black, it's kind of strange because on one hand it's to be recognized as black, to be like have other people look at you and then you're black like politically and publicly and whatever assumptions people make about you based on that. And then there's also people who um, consider themselves black who are not visibly or obviously black in that way. Like even people might consider me not that way. At the beginning of the year, introducing myself to people, um, sometimes people would take a step back and be like, wait, what are you? And I'd say, what do you mean, what am I? And they would say like, what's your race? And I'd say, well, I'm half white. And they'd be like, yeah, okay, we can see that. You know, the red hair, the freckles. And then I'd say, I'm half black too. And they'd say, what? You're black? <laughs> and I'd say, no, I'm half black and I'm half white. I'm the whole package. <laughs> I'm not just one and I'm not just the other. I'm both. So I am black Japanese. I'm Blasian, but I am black because no one's ever going to see me, look at me and say, oh, look at that Asian girl, you know? People are telling us, you don't belong here. You don't deserve to be here. And at that point, it wasn't like I could just go and hide in my Asianness and hide in that side of me and pretend like I wasn't black. Like that really came to the forefront. And I realized the implications of what that means being here on this campus. I 
I have felt unsafe a lot at this campus um, as a woman identified person, as a black person, as a queer person. And I, I guess for that reason, I have avoided a lot of spaces, intellectual spaces as well as social spaces and even cultural spaces here. And so I've created my own safe space, but it's very secluded. It's oftentimes my own room. And so I guess there's a way in which Harvard is, is safe for me because I tried to create that in my whatever personal individual way I could. But there are so many spaces that felt so dangerous um, to be like a woman um, that, and then a black woman at that, that I don't know if I could come out and describe Harvard as, as safe. I don't feel as if like Harvard is my campus per se. Um, I feel like sometimes when I'm like outside of like the black community, um, so like in normal Harvard, I have to like be more conscious of what I say, how I walk, um, who I talk to, or just basically, you know, one thing that someone told me back home is when you open your mouth, people see your brains. And I feel like I constantly have to think about what I'm gonna say before I open my mouth because I don't want people to judge me. Um, but I feel like once you enter like the black community at Harvard, once I attend, you know, their events, their meetings, um, or whatever else they're co-sponsoring, I feel as if it's my space, you know, I belong here and I can do whatever I want because I am here, I'm home. Yes! Yes! What town? I'm the president of the Harvard Black Men's Forum, and since I've gotten here, they've just been a really welcoming group of guys. I remember getting here and like the first group of people I met were group of, I think, 20 or 30 black men. They had uh, kind of off-the-cuff beam up me to welcome the uh, pre-frost, and I was just shocked to see that many black men go to Harvard. I didn't know <laughs> groups like that existed. That was kind of the first moment I, when I got on campus that I felt some kind of racial solidarity. I haven't been very involved in the black groups on campus. I would like to be more involved, but I think being biracial, I kind of find my community everywhere. I tend not to pick up on race at all, actually, except for when there's a lot of, when, it's, when there's this huge disparity. Pretty much as far back as I can remember, I've always been pretty cognizant of race and of the various nuances that are associated with it. But this past semester was weird and interesting and uncomfortable because it was the first time in a long time that I felt the burden of being black in the classroom and being black walking around Harvard's campus. I don't know what it was about my freshman year where I didn't feel it as much, but this year walking around and walking into my classes, I just felt like the other. She said, oh, well, there are so many cases when, you know, we do admit African-American students and it's, it's both horrible for the university and the students because they underperform and everybody, it's just a lose-lose situation. I felt marginalized. I felt attacked being one of the only black people in the room and them saying like this kind of stuff. And then, you know, my, the preceptor, she just looks me dead in the eye with this, the most intense glare that I have like ever really seen and I'm like I'm like right here like I'm like sitting like right next to her and she's just like yes but why do they always have to pick the black student and she just she like said it twice too I was like I just told you that they don't always pick the black student if they always pick the black student in cases of affirmative action then there will be a lot more we'll make up a lot more than 10 percent of Harvard University's population honestly so they obviously don't pick always pick the black person but she just she looked directly at me and said it with like a really intense glare and I was just like I felt some type of way I felt like she was I felt like she was basically saying you know what she really wanted to say was but why did they choose you why are you here right now why are you in my class it really let me know how not just students feel because I already knew that there were a lot of students who feel like I didn't deserve to be here but also like faculty members there are no black female uh, professors, no tenured professors, no even non-tenured professors in a lot of my science classes here. And so there's never a time when I have like a mentor I can go to, even like a black male professor doesn't exist. There's never really anyone I can talk to about what it's like to be in the hard sciences at Harvard. So a lot of times that makes me feel kind of marginalized. And there's always that moment when you're the only black student in your section. When in class and you're the only black kid and this, the n-word comes up or something in a book or something where there's slavery or whatever it is. Uh, and the issue of race comes up or the issue of slavery or the issue of whatever. Everyone, everyone looks, looks to you, you as if you're about to speak for your race. <laughs> as if like you represent everybody in the race and suddenly your voice 
will like carry such weight. And it's kind of frustrating because you would hope that people would understand um, that there are all different types of black people and black people don't all have the same opinions about the same issues. Or it's like, will she get angry about it? How does she react? Should we be walking on eggshells about this topic? And it's like, no, I'm just learning like everybody else. Uh, and so I, I'm always tempted to hold back and not say anything um, because I don't want to feel like they're gonna take what I say as representative of everyone. <laughs> I don't think there's like a black culture. People have like they do different things. I mean, there's some things that I guess you like unite like African Americans, but then you have like people like coming in from Africa or like the Caribbean all the time and stuff. Like, are they not black? No, they're allowed to be black too. <laughs> You can drive through my town and you'll see Confederate flags waving. And this is Massachusetts, you know? So coming from a place like that where racism is kind of celebrated in some places to a place like this where it's much more diverse and I feel much more open and people are much more willing to have conversations. Harvard is my campus. I didn't really claim Harvard. I would say, well, I go to Harvard, but I'm not really I'm not really of Harvard. I'm not, I don't feel like a typical Harvard student. And it took a while and it took a lot of experiences to, to prove and to illustrate that, that I too am Harvard. I'm not sure I'm of Harvard, but at the same time, um, it's gonna help me in whatever avenues I choose to take my next, next steps. I guess the like, biggest irony of coming to Harvard is that for as much pain and as much confusion as it caused me, it also developed in me a really focused and sharp sense of what I want to do moving forward. And it has made me excited about um, the work to come and the kind of life I want to live in the future. Most of the time I say this campus feels safe and as for it belonging to me, I guess it, it's, Harvard is this institution that stood before the Constitution of the United States. And so it's, I think it's something you have to kind of make it your space because it's, it stood long before you were here and it'll stand long after you go. So if you don't make it your own space, like it's not necessarily a space that's gonna make you feel a part of it. But if you really make yourself a part of it, then yeah, you can be a part of the space.